ones, too many children still grow up learning to resent or even hate others just because they're different. Some learn it from their parents, others from each other. We've put the subject on the agenda tonight because in some of America's schools, there is a real effort to teach children why prejudice is wrong and the long-term effect it can have. Our agenda reporter is Bill Blakemore. In a Chicago public school, students of different races are riveted by a story. African-American Leon Bass tells about the day in 1943 he and some white friends joined the U.S. Army. There stood the sergeant, and he looked at me, and he said, go this way. He looked at my friends, and he told them to go this way. And then he tells them what it was like to be one of the first American soldiers to see the effects of the Holocaust, the Nazis' attempt to wipe out the Jews and others they viewed as inferior. He tells them what he saw when he walked into the concentration camp at Buchenwald. They had skeletal faces. There they stood holding on to one another in those flimsy striped pajama-type clothing. And I said to myself, my God, what is this insanity? Who are these people? What have they done? What was their crime? At a high school in Baltimore. Today, as I mentioned, we want to look at this uh, concept of indoctrination and propaganda. Students examine how Hitler succeeded. Propaganda works on bias. It works on the failings of that person. It doesn't work on intelligence. And they analyze a video showing how the Ku Klux Klan recruits members. The Klan recruits not only adults, but teenagers as well. How do you feel about uh, blacks? And... Do you hate them? Yeah. <laughs> they find connections. The um, Ku Klux Klan is trying to be like the Nazis, right? Because they're trying to turn people on the blacks and the um, immigrants. They're turning people against them, so, like they did with the Jews. In a Boston suburb, white students, Jews and Christians, struggle with lessons from the Nazi Holocaust. Any people, no, ma no matter how educated they are, can easily turn, turn into, into discriminatory people because of, of a strong leader. They don't dwell on the horror they find in their source books, but do explore how it could happen. Authority figures have to be very careful what they say and how they act because they can shape huge masses of people. This course, called Facing History and Ourselves, gives kids the bad the news mindset. about the human okay, race, about its many genocides in Armenia, like Cambodia, and elsewhere. It was created by history teacher Margot Strom and some friends, who found most American textbooks don't face the horrors of human societies, abroad or at home. Kids are saying, I needed to know this. Adults should have told me. I want to know why the adults have such a hard time with this. The Nazi Holocaust is the starting point of this curriculum. Learning how and why people there took the wrong road leads to discussions even about the kids' own lives. It's ourselves, it's you. It's, I, and we learn that it's us that makes a difference in how we can act. That's the whole way the Holocaust started, because no one stood up because they're afraid to be alone. Someone can be prejudiced in 1992 for the same reason someone was in 1492. As these kids know too well, a boy concerned about his classmates. There's a kid in our school that's, he just doesn't like black people. Like today, my friend Ali, he found a little paper of swastika sign on it in his desk. A girl preparing for a religious ceremony. I took the class the same year that our temple was graffitied with like anti-Semitic like vandalism. I was afraid to go in there. I didn't want the graffiti up while I was gonna have my bat mitzvah. Racism is still with us. I somehow have to make them aware that they're not alone, that they're people who are aware of these things and that they too can stand up to it. That's why I say you got to go to school, study, and think, and make up your own mind. These teachers encourage independent thought and argument, but do take a stand on the need to choose between right and wrong. We've got a bias. We tell them that there is a difference between good and evil, and you have a choice. And it's your responsibility to come out on the side of good. What's done in the past can't be changed. It can't be changed, but it doesn't necessarily have to be repeated. Yes. Through teaching us, then we can teach our children that it's wrong, and then hopefully it won't ever happen again. Bill Blakemore, ABC News. Program note, this coming Saturday morning, we'll be spending some more time on the air listening to children talk about what it's like to have others hate them just because they're different. Maybe the parents will listen as well. Saturday morning on ABC, 11.30, 10.30 Central Time. There'll be an 800 number. Hope you'll join us. That's our report on World News Tonight. I'm Peter Jennings. Good night.
all black people are criminals. Are all Jewish people rich? Why do Asian people have slanted eyes? They are questions rarely raised, too painful perhaps, too provocative. Do all Indians live on reservations? But this morning on Prejudice, answering children's questions, children were challenged to think about prejudice, to question stereotypes, and in some cases, to experience discrimination. We want these people to find out how it feels to be discriminated against on the basis of a physical characteristic over which you have no control. Children with blue and green eyes were given colors, making them different. Clumsy, fearless. For most, it was a revealing encounter. She was making fun of all the people with light-colored eyes, with blue and green. Think that's unfair? Yeah. Those who did not experience prejudice firsthand bore witness as Donald, a black boy, and Dash, a white boy, did exactly the same thing, getting profoundly different results. The closest one to me grabbed their chain. I don't think I was doing anything at all. I think it was just because I was black. Communication and education. ABC Science editor Michael Gillen explained the origins of skin color and the role of geography and the sun. How did you end up with your particular color? Well, it depends on where your ancestors originally lived. And there was another lesson seated in the audience. There was Frank. Well, are you a Nazi? Uh, <laughs> in a, some sense of the way you could say that, yes. It was Frank who galvanized the audience both in the studio and at home. All the people who are there are like, oh, I'm not prejudiced against blacks, and I'm not prejudiced against Asians. But uh, most of the people there were prejudiced against Frank. If you can get someone to think for 30 seconds, then you've made a difference. If, if we got you to think for a minute, if we opened you to something for a minute, that makes a difference. Karen Burns, ABC News, New York. When we return, San Francisco's favorite warrior. Oh! Oh!